Hello, my name is Kerry Arth, and today we're going to talk a little bit about recasts. And this is off the back of the Forge World stuff, whereby a lot of the Horus Heresy upgrade kits just went out the window. They were moved to Last Chance to buy, and my biggest issue with that was the lack of communication, especially given how well Games Workshop are doing at the moment with communication. Um, Forge World just ditching a load of stuff and not saying anything about it, and yeah, they did put a couple of statements on Facebook, but only in replies to people from what I've seen, and it was very generic, it was very kind of, oh yeah, well sometimes you need to stop making stuff to make room for other stuff, which is not really enough when you consider that the Horus Heresy is a product that is only really supported fully by Forge World. Yes, you can get things like Marines and stuff from Games Workshop and Terminators and the Contemptor, but when it comes to the big stuff, the actual upgrade sprues to be able to specify your chapter and your chapter, your legion, um, that's all Horus, that's all like all Horus Heresy Forge World only things. You can only get those upgrade sprues from Forge World. So just ditching it, not a good move, especially when you don't actually talk about why. In all of that happening, um, I've watched a couple of videos, I've read a few posts from people. Um, specifically, uh, Varak and the Outer Circle, they both mentioned recasts in their videos about the about Forge World just ditching all of this stuff. And I thought we'd talk a little bit about recasts, because to, to me there's, there's two distinct kind of varieties. There is the actual kind of full-on recast, whereby you can go to a website and you can find, for instance, a Imperial Knight Porphyron for less than like less than a quarter of the price that you pay from Forge World. Now, of course, you are taking a gamble there. It is a recast. There's a good chance that what you buy will not be good quality. Then again, it could be fine. You don't really know. You have to wait for people to review this stuff. And funny enough, reviews are hard to come by because Games Workshop don't like people recasting. The whole thing it can be a little bit of a minefield to navigate. Now, of course, it, recasting exists because it's cheaper for people to buy than it is for them to buy from Forge World. It's, it's a kind of... I think Shady is right in a way, because let's face it, they do not have the legal permissions to actually <laughs> make this stuff, but they're doing it anyway. Um, but it comes out of the fact that quite often, and I include, include myself in this, obviously, people want what they can't necessarily afford or want what they believe is extortionately expensive. And in the case of Forge World, especially when you look at things like the upgrade stuff for the Horus Heresy series, I would argue that that definitely falls under the mantle of extortionately expensive. £44 for 10 heads, 10 torsos and some shoulder pads is not good value for money, in my opinion, not even slightly. And so you can easily see why people would go to recasters for that. Of course, alongside that is the fact that recasters will and do infringe on the sales made by Forge World. You know, if people are going elsewhere to buy Forge World products, even though Forge World is the only place you should really be able to get those products, legally at least, then that is going to cut into their profit margins. That you could then argue, well, maybe if their stuff didn't cost the earth, people wouldn't feel the need to go to recasters. There's also, alongside what I would class as like full-on recasters, you know, the ones who literally take a model from Games Workshop, from Forge World, and then offer it at a lower price by... I don't know exactly how it's done. I'm assuming they make a mold around that model, around the parts, and then they fill that mold themselves and then reuse the mold and so on and so forth. I mean, there's also now a, a rising thing in terms of people 3D printing stuff like shoulder pads. Now, that's not to me recast. Quite a lot of them are relatively... When I say unique designs, they are not exactly the same as you get from Games Workshop. They are not exactly the same kit that you would get from Forge World. They're not exactly the same kit you get from Games Workshop. They are fan interpretations of. You know, they might have the, the chapter or legion symbol, but it may not be identical to what you would see from official Games Workshop sites. There is a difference between people who go out and buy what Games Workshop already produces, but they get it from a recaster, and someone who goes out to buy, I don't know, like a Howling Griffins shoulder pad. As far as no Games Workshop don't make those, Forge World don't make those. There is no such thing as a Howling Griffin shoulder pad and therefore if you wanted one you're kind of stuck unless you go to a third party like manufacturer which is quite a big thing. I mean things like Shapeways and Pop Goes the Monkey and stuff, they do offer stuff that is distinctly similar but they are also offering things that Games Workshop outright do not provide a lot of the time. And that's where it gets a bit muddy and it gets a bit interesting because on the one hand 
I can see why that also might dip into Games Workshop sales a little bit. You know, there might be a temptation to just buy something from Games Workshop that kind of fulfills the needs that you have, but not really, and just work with it. That temptation is taken away if you can get exactly what you want somewhere else. And when it comes to stuff like the Horus Heresy stuff being discontinued by Forge World, not all of it, just the upgrade stuff, obviously, um, that is where the two worlds kind of collide a little bit, and I find it really interesting to think about and to see what people are saying about the possible impact that recasting might have had on that. Now, personally, I don't really think that there will have been that much of a like a crushing blow to Forge World due to recasters. I don't know if that's necessarily what will have happened. If anything, I would suggest that Forge World spread themselves too thin. I can see it more being the case that they had this grand vision for, you know, people all over the place with massive legions and all of them are kitted out, they're decked out with their legion specific torsos and heads and shoulder pads and so on and so forth. But in reality, the Horus Heresy stuff is really damn expensive. And it's not feasible to spend like £90 on 20 marines. It's just not. Horus Heresy is obviously, as a whole, a product that's aimed at the, I'd say the 40k player who has even more of a disposable income. You know, when buying five knights just isn't enough, buy 20 marines for £90. Although having said that, thinking about it, the Death Watch stuff is about the same now. If you want 20 primaries and intercessors, you're going to be paying the same amount, so... Mm, yeah, that's not great, is it? But you get what I mean. It's it's an excessive amount, and if people have the option to go elsewhere, they most likely will. But how many people actually did go elsewhere? How many people did actually look at that and go, I'm not paying that, I'll go to a recaster? Rather than just going, oh well I just won't bother then. This is where it kind of gets a bit interesting, because it's kind of difficult to know how much of an impact that will have had on something like Forge World, moving all of that stuff over last chance to buy. And when it comes to, when it comes to, I think that like the basics of it, it's difficult to know how much of an impact recasters have had. It's even harder to know how much of an impact people who make third-party things like shoulder pads for specific chapters and legions, how much impact they will have, because they're quite often providing something that Games Workshop don't actually make. When it comes to things like buying a separate gun. I think is a good example. So you want to put a certain gun on your on your Razorback. You get that gun from elsewhere. Does that really impact Games Workshop all that much? If it's just a different design, well you've already bought the Razorback, you've already got the weapons options that come with it. If you're trying to put a weapons option that doesn't come in the box, then if Games Workshop don't sell that, what do you do? You either kit bash it, or you go to a third party manufacturer for it. In which case, what have Games Workshop actually lost? It's the same for a lot of that stuff. It's very hard to actually <laughs> gauge the impact of people who are making third-party parts and, you know, conversion pieces, because a lot of them are making them in response to the fact that Games Workshop just don't make them. You know, how, how are you supposed to judge whether or not that is a good or bad thing when that thing didn't exist before. To be honest, for me at this point, the everything moving to Last Chance to Buy, I think is interesting in that it shows possibly a mistake by Forge World. A mistake where they probably thought that this stuff was going to sell better than it did, and then found that actually it hadn't sold that well at all. Whether Recast actually comes into it or not, I think is kind of a different story, because Whilst they are definitely on the rise, and whilst it is a lot more prevalent, it's a lot easier to find recasts now, I'd be really interested to know whether people were actually going out and buying recast upgrade packs, rather than getting them from Forge World, or whether they just didn't bother to begin with. The overall thing, of course, is are recasts good or bad? That's kind of tricky. On the one hand, I think Forge World is still too expensive. Even by the metric of Games Workshop, I think Forge World is too expensive. Does that mean that you could just go out and buy whatever you like and it shouldn't matter? 
Probably not. The fact is that without actually spending money at Forge World, Forge World will cease to exist, and so those models that you're buying from recasters wouldn't have been made in the first place. It's an interesting cycle whereby I totally understand why you would, because you know having something for cheaper is always nicer. But at the same time, if everyone only bought from recasters, there would be no new models ever from Forge World because Forge World would cease to exist, which would obviously be bad. It's a kind of weird state of equilibrium whereby there's enough stuff being bought legitimately to keep Forge World going and make it a worthwhile endeavour, but there may be just enough being bought to have a little bit of an impact on how well Forge World actually does. Kind of a weird balance in a way. When it comes to third party stuff that's like conversion, shoulder pads, all of that stuff, that I think is genuinely valuable and it fills a niche that Games Workshop will not fill. They don't do a full range of chapter or legion branded shoulder pads. So if you want that, you've got to go somewhere else. They don't even do a full range in terms of transfer sheets. You either have to print your own or buy some from someone else. And if you're going to be buying some from someone else, you may as well get the shoulder pads as well. Things like Shapeways and Pop Goes the Monkey, there are things there that Games Workshop simply don't provide. And it's the same with various weapons. There are, well, in the past, I don't know how prevalent it is now, um, because everything I've needed I've found in kits recently um, from Games Workshop, but there was a point not really that long ago where you would have a certain number of weapons that would be able to be taken in a squad, and there would not be that number of weapons in the box. And that's where things like Anvil Industries came in for me, because they did equivalent weapons. They did ones that looked like them, and so I would go there. Now, has Games Workshop lost out on anything there? Not really, no, because they didn't put the options in the box to begin with. They didn't give me the thing that I needed, the thing that I wanted, and the only choice that I had was to buy another box to get that stuff, but then if I wanted to kit that box out the same, I then couldn't do that because I wouldn't have enough of that particular part. If a service is providing something that Games Workshop doesn't provide, it's not an issue to me. I also don't think it should come under the general kind of label of recast because there was no original cast to begin with. It's an interesting subject and it's one of those things where it's very easy to sit there and go, recast is terrible, don't ever do it. But there's also a lot to be said for kind of pricing things in such a way that you will hit a wider market. As it stands, if I'm honest, the way that Games um, Forge World, more than Games Workshop, has been going about things, especially with the lack of communication, I think they're in a trickier position. I don't think they can just blanket do what they like at this point. I think they kind of need to be a bit more considered in their approach. They need to talk to their customer base more because they are almost the... Well, no, I'd argue they are kind of like the... <sighs> not the pre like the luxury version of games workshop in a way if you've got that extra cash forge world is where you go to buy it like wait go to buy stuff 40k related because they provide stuff on top of what games workshop does that can only last so long if you act stuff randomly and if there is a chance that you can just get a recast of it anyway it's a good way to alienate people and make them look for other options recasting might not actually be a problem if they handled themselves properly, Forge World and Games Workshop, the question is whether they do handle themselves properly, whether they do do the communication thing, whether they do acknowledge that if something's sold badly, even though it looked great, maybe it's something to do with the price. And if the price is too high, maybe we need to look at a different way of manufacturing. I'm not saying that Forge World is going to go bust because of recasting, but it will have an increasing effect if there is no attempt made to try and compete with it. Question is, what do you think? Recasts, good or bad? Do you think there is a place or not a place at all? Do you use it at all? Um, and if so, why? Is it just the cost side of things? Is it an unwillingness to support a company that is not communicating properly? Um, and when it comes to things like third party stuff, like shoulder pads, like conversion parts, what's your stance on those? I'm assuming that most of you will probably be okay with it, but it'd be interesting to see if, there any, if there's anyone who isn't. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Um, leave a comment down below. Obviously, always. I always read them. You know I do. And click either the video, Patreon, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And I will see you for the next one. Toodaloo.